Welcome to an all new episode of The McFuture. I'm Steve Factor, and today we're going to talk about why the truth died. I have five reasons why <laughs> everything is now a lie. In 1963, 10% of Yale students got A's. You know what it was in 2012? 62%. And that's not the only thing that's inflating our egos. Pretty much everything around us is. We would not know the truth if it tried to smother us in our sleep. I wear a size 36. I know my jeans are not 36 because I have pictures of myself from high school. <laughs> I could tell that we are not the same guy, but the company added an extra two inches because, hey, why not? Why not have me feel better about myself? And when they unload my fat ass <laughs> from my rascal scooter at the departure gate, I'm going to think, you know what? It's not me. It's them. They just don't know what a 36 really looks like. Or that $3,000 Chanel bag I know some women have. It screams status. <laughs> it screams even louder from your tiny studio apartment where the bathtub is in the kitchen. And then all these people with their little kids, you know, little Timmy, he can't sing. He can't play basketball and he definitely cannot draw. But he's got a wall of trophies and he's got this fridge of sorrows <laughs> where you've got that, you know, the thing that he drew. There's like the stick figure mommy riding a muffin and then being dragged by something that looks like a beaver. And maybe the kid's just high. America is pretty much the Courtney love of countries. We know that esteem and courage and escape can only come from one place, Pfizer. Without antidepressants, how would Katie stage her daily self-empowerment festival on Facebook? You know, all those motivational posters that really don't motivate anyone except the person posting them. Things like, ooh, all bodies are beautiful. The sexiest feature is confidence. True beauties got booty. Great. Let's test all of those at the bar. What about all those ads that are disguised as lives on Instagram and Bravo? Or all the bodies that are doctored by, <laughs> by doctors or by Photoshop? And all the days we spend at work, you know how many people are curating authentic influencers pretending like any human on earth ever wanted to engage with a brand? And then you've got the employee self-assessments. I had people who worked for me. You would think their PowerPoints were heart transplants. Their accomplishments were so well beyond what was actually visible in the world. You have bosses too and HR people who talk to you like they're explaining Santa to a toddler. Here are your strengths and areas for improvement. Whew, thank God. Thought I sucked at something. Guess I better stop sawing her desk in half. Then there's the fake news and the, the crackpot conspiracies that everyone's talking about. I have no idea how fake news is any different than cherry picking real news that you agree with just to reinforce your fake reality. We have this constant state of fake outrage. <laughs> you have someone like hashtagging the crap out of somebody to get them fired. Five minutes later, they're on to the next thing, completely indifferent to what damage they've caused because they don't really care. It is a lie. Or all the mindless BuzzFeed ads that people <laughs> just assume are articles or those Refinery29 quizzes, all of that stuff. Fake, fake, fake. The same people who don't see that fakeness are like, ooh, fake news. I haven't read a science book in 20 years. But you know what? My Facebook says... I fucking love science. You know that page that has millions and millions of likes? I don't even click on their links. Like, like, like. Science is so easy. I love it. Uh, no, no. I fucking love it. Now, you'd think our fucking love of science would pretty much kill all the, the pseudoscience bullshit. It doesn't. Vaccines cause autism. GMO kills. Coffee cures cancer. Pot cures everything else. The earth is flat. And there's actually a bunch of morons out there who think the earth is flat. And you know what? There's a good reason for that. Scientific studies themselves, they're becoming like Bible passages. You can find one to support whatever you think the facts should be. 
you know, a lot of it has to do with corporate funding, but also a really broken academic research system. I'm writing a whole separate piece on that. But the lies can't be refuted by the thing that's supposed to refute it. So what's really happening here? What we're witnessing is America's transition from facts to feelings. Perception and reality haven't been this far apart since dear leader Kim Jong-un defeated the grand wizards at Dumbledore. The more we drift away from fact and truth into this ocean of feelings, the more certain and defiant we become in our truth. Our identity starts to depend on it. So all of these things, the tweets, the products we buy, the opinions that we subscribe to, they have to keep reaffirming that identity. It gives our lives meaning. Now, if there were only some other historical example of people clinging to and fighting over unprovable dogmas, maybe there's a lesson we could learn. But too bad, I, I can't really think of one. When opinions and whole identities are based on feelings and not facts, on the supernatural and not the observable, how do you have debate or compromise? Everyone occupies this fantasy world that they created. Fantasy has become reality. The thinker is on life support. Now it's the feeler, the believer, <laughs> the believer. There are five reasons I think this is happening. It's pretty much evolutionary. So the first thing is, the stakes have never been lower. We basically won. This is the first time in history that we're completely safe from extreme weather and from plagues and invading Mongolians. And our food, it's dirt cheap. It arrives on styrofoam, just like Mother Monsanto intended it. In the old world, you can afford not to agree. Is there a bear in the village or isn't there a bear in the village? But... In a world where all of that stuff is taken care of for you, you can afford a fake reality because the real stuff that still matters is taken care of by other people. It's been automated. The second reason that this is happening is there's a severe validation deficit. Here's what I mean by that. When we were hunting, building, defending, it was pretty easy to tell who was doing a good job. They lived. They were alive. Validation was built right in. Hey, his family's alive. That's a good provider. Today, so much of our lives are virtual or abstract. Like on one hand, yeah, great. Netflix. Woohoo. On the other, if you're PowerPointing and brainstorming and Photoshopping all day, there is no tangible impact on the world. There is no connection between what you did all day and how you live and how you survive. We don't even see physical money for all that work. Some numbers maybe show up in an account and then before you know it, some guy hands you pad thai in the lobby. And so this elaborate laundering scheme that we've created demands that other people validate us. Someone else has to tell you that what you did mattered to somebody, whereas before it was built in. Now the third thing is, we're still tribal. We don't have communities where we rely on each other for survival. You know, we've outsourced all this stuff. So government takes care of a lot of this stuff or industry, social security and sanitation and police and I don't know, 401k plans. All of that stuff is now a substitute for community. Americans move out of the house by 18 or <laughs> run away from home at 12, but we still crave community. Ever wonder why there's a Chinatown in every major city on earth, <laughs> especially in China? We crave the company of others that are like us. And tribes were always built on culture and geography, but also need. We would be either defending or capturing these scarce resources. Other tribes were maybe built on irrational love or hate of something, right? You hate that other tribe or you love God or your God, not their God. <laughs> We've taken a lot of that stuff out of the equation and need especially is gone. So we have to find these new tribes. And by the way, I have a crazy good piece that I'm writing on the subject. So you might want to subscribe to the mailing list to get notified on it. The fourth thing is these virtual bubbles. 
when you have this technology that we've developed, when I say we, <laughs> none of us, not me, <laughs> but other smarter people have developed Facebook and other things like it, Amazon, Google, they pretty much learn what you like and what you don't. And after a while, that becomes the only world you know because they want you to keep clicking and keep using their product. Eventually, your world closes in. We're like that kid who closes his eyes to hide from the boogeyman. Well, you know what? Our room is full of boogeymen and it's pretty much time to look them in the eye. The fifth reason why the truth died is education. When candidate Trump said, We won with young. We won with old. We won with highly educated. We won with poorly educated. I love the poorly educated. We're the smartest people. We're the most loyal people. I love the poorly educated. Thousands of conspiracy theorists orgasm. They always suspected that the last thing that the elite or whatever they call them, the Illuminati want is a bunch of critical thinkers running around. What they want, according to the theory, is a bunch of obedient masses that are buying these $90 anti-aging creams with pearl particles. Conspiracy or not, even our best schools are still churning out these obedient little robots for mass industrial employment that doesn't exist anymore. What they don't teach us is critical thinking and skepticism and how to solve problems and resolve conflicts and innovate and work with teams. I'm not longing for the good old days because they weren't very good. <laughs> they were just old. But all of our lies are luxury items. They're made possible by progress. Everything from alternative facts to these intolerant tolerance warriors to Donald J. Trump, every single one of them is a luxury item. The question is, how much more luxury can we afford before we're back to the good old days? The way to deal with this is we need brutal scrutiny, not of these things, but of ourselves. You know, just like grocery checkout and travel booking and music discovery. All of those things are now up to us. Finding the truth is up to us also. I don't think it's about idiot proofing the planet, locking away anything that might possibly hurt us. Oh no, fake news, open fire. No, it's about understanding why we're so easy to manipulate in the first place. Why do all these aspirational images and comforting quotes and half-truths, why do they feel so good to us? Why do they feed our envy, our fears, our biases? And then why do we bend to their will? I think asking those questions is a great start. But then there's the hard part, clawing your way to the source. What is it that's really missing? Is it love? Is it intellect? Is it empathy? Is it community? open-mindedness, family, effort, motivation, goals, friendship, exercise. I don't know. Every person is going to have a different reason why they're buying into bullshit. These are all the questions we're afraid to ask because we are afraid of what we might find. And I think we secretly know what that is. The good news is once we find the source of our void, there's this unlimited opportunity to fill it. There's a how-to site or class or guru for everything. Even collectively, we have the technology and creativity to solve any problem. The only thing that's missing is the will and honest diagnosis. Oftentimes, we're just solving for the wrong things. There is something comforting here. Each new generation is more educated, more intelligent, more democratic, more secular, and more peaceful than the last one. That means this bout of idiocracy is temporary. I'm Steve Factor. See you next week on The McFuture. <laughs>